Hello, it's your boy Dane Reads. It is currently 4.38 p.m. on Sunday the 27th of December. Uh, I am just finishing off A Daughter's A Daughter by Mary Westmacott. Actually, Agatha Christie, but uh, Westmacott was her pen name. Doing a bit of work, doing a bit of filming, and my cat is cleaning himself over there, and it is adorable. So I'm gonna go and annoy him. Hello everybody, uh, Dane here. It was currently the 28th, uh, which makes it Monday the 28th of December 2020. It's 6.35 p.m. I finished reading A, a, a Daughter's A Daughter by Mary Westmacott slash Agatha Christie. So uh, there will be a review of that coming soon. It's one of the books she wrote under a pseudonym. Uh, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Um, I mentioned it in my last blog, blog as well, so more information there. And I've been reading Bed by Tao Lin. So this is short stories. Um, Tao Lin is quite like, um, it's quite a unique writer, I guess. I mean, a lot, a lot of people find Tao Lin quite pretentious, I think, but I actually like his stuff. It's fairly experimental, um, more on the avant-garde side of things. I think uh, what he does well is he takes like really mundane stuff and writes stories about it. And I guess people either love it or they hate it. But um, I'm enjoying it. I'm about halfway through so far. Obviously, as with any short story collection, there are some in, in, in there that I'm enjoying more than others. But overall, I am enjoying it. And uh, I plan to move on to A Decent Ride by Irvin Welsh. Hello and guten tag. It is the 29th of December. Uh, Tuesday, 29th of December. It is 8.43 p.m. Latest edition of The Art Show went out today with Susie as the interview guest and with one of my short stories in it and the reaction to that's been pretty positive. So that's all very good. Uh, I have been doing lots of work. I've actually, I'm all up to date with Art Centre stuff now. So I'm kind of, I've got like four clients or something currently, um, which I'm just gonna be bossing over the next week or so because a few of them I've like fallen behind with as well. Uh, I finished reading Bed by Tao Lin and I've currently moved on to Planet News by Allen Ginsberg. It's over there, I would show you, but it's not really worth showing you. Uh, I've already decided I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of five. It's just okay, but there's none of that like Ginsberg greatness in there. And to be honest, I'm reading it and starting to think maybe I'm getting too old for Ginsberg, which is a terrifying thought. Um, but yeah, that arrived in the post, so I actually have to haul that. And I also got uh, an Albert Camus book in the post too. And down here, this is a box of No Rest for the Wicked, my uh, first book, which is available through Dragon Moon Press. And this is a box of about 10 copies of it. Uh, I'd run out, so let me know if you want one of these. Seven pound plus postage. Uh, so it comes to 8.99 in the UK. And you sign and you get a pen. So just let me know in the comments if you're interested and we can sort that out. I've been doing a lot of Duolingo. Uh, Charlie Heathcote, if you're watching this, you're probably wondering how I've just suddenly like bossed this week on Duolingo after having a few bad weeks. I don't know if they've done this on Italian, so Charlie might not have it, but um, they've added these audio lessons for French. So I don't have any for German or High Valerian, but I do have them for French. And it's like listening to a podcast, except then it tests you as well. So let's try some. Froid ici. Because it's cold here. Parce qu'il fait froid. Parce qu'il fait froid. Excellent. Merci. So we've been talking a lot about making. So there's a lot, a lot of fun. I've just had that on in the background while I've been working. So I've done like 12 hours of Duolingo in the last two days or something. Because each of these, there's like, I think there's a total of 30 sets and each one takes about 15 minutes and I have about eight left to do. Uh, but that means I, on Duolingo this week, I've got like 1800 experience already or something. I'm currently at the top of the Diamond League. I'm trying to win the Diamond League for a second time, purely because I can take advantage of this new feature. Um, but yeah, I'll probably finish doing that this evening. So then there's no more free and easy uh, experience. So I might do some of the Duolingo stories, we'll see. Yeah, still reading and stuff. I got some, the post, as, as I told you, came today. I got some stuff from my dad. He got me some beard baubles, but as you can see, I've trimmed my beard because my uh, electric shaver finally arrived. I already have two, and I keep losing the little clips at the end that's like specify the length. So I had to buy a third one, although now I have loads of clips, so that's gonna be all right. But yeah, finally got to trim my beard, which is good because that was doing my fruit in. Uh, he also sent me a, ch uh, a tuning, like, thi it's, you put it on, um, where's my guitar? It's a tuning peg winder, so you put it over these pegs. 
I haven't opened it. I'm not going to open actually because I don't use it because the thing is you can also just use your fingers. So I don't see why you would need one of these to do it. Uh, but yeah, he sent me that as well. And he also sent me tabletop golf. I don't know why, but thank you, Dad. <laughs> he sent me an Amazon voucher as well, so that's why the Ginsberg and the Camu Buck are here. So thank you for those. Uh, and that's about it, really. I've got a lot more filming to do today. Uh, I did my interview with Alice Jane earlier, so that's going to be the next interview on the art show. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That'll be for the first episode of the new year. And we good. We good. Just doing more work and shit. Hello, just a quick update to let you know I have now finished reading um, bloody hell, uh, Camus. I can't remember what it was called already, but I finished reading it and I've now started reading A Decent Ride by Irvin Welsh. I'm all caught up, with, caught up with all of my filming, including my Q4 favourites and my favourites of 2020. It's 10 to, 10, 10 to midnight, sorry. So I'm now going to go and start doing some editing and I need to just make sure that the house is nice and tidy. Susie finishes work at about 2 p.m. tomorrow and is going to come over here after that. So I need the house to be tidy and stuff before then. I probably will have some time to do some productive stuff over the weekend, especially if we listen to some vinyls. But hopefully I'll be able to mostly do my own productive stuff. So that should be good. And I think we also might do some filming together or at least, I don't know, we need to do, um, we need to do a trailer video for the channel. Mm. All right, it is currently, it's 4.07 p.m. on the 2nd of January, which is the Saturday. Uh, I have a glamorous assistant who's about to join me. Okay, here I come. Yes, Susie's here. Say hey hello. Guys. Yeah. Uh, you've not been feeling very well today, have you? No, I've literally just blown my nose. It's not COVID, mm. it's just a cold. Yeah, bless it. <laughs> so I feel like bleep, but I'm here. Mm, yeah, so. and you're here to tell the people about what you've been reading. Your adoring masses. Mm. So the last time I featured on this vlog, I had just started Solace and it is brilliant. Uh, it's for young adults. Some people turn their noses up, but I don't care. So it's uh, Victorian steampunk vampires werewolves, right? And it follows the story of Alexa Terribotti. And in Victorian times, there's a cat. Um, she would have been slightly frowned upon because she's like part Italian but she's trying to make it in aristocratic society but also on top of that she's what is known in the world as a preternatural which means she was born with no soul that means she can counteract the effects of people who have excess soul which are the vampires and the werewolves so imagine Dane you were a vampire and you're coming at me like do that and all of a sudden your fangs disappear and you're human and I could shoot you in the chest because you're mortal. That's where she becomes badass. So what they do is they take the bad guys, they turn them into not bad guys and then murder them. Yes, because that's what good guys do, mm. right? That's what the Americans do. <laughs> okay, so that's the, the general world, right? But also the style of it is so charming. It's, it's all about that um, Jane Austen style pretense where it's, it's all about manners and you know easily shocked. There's a scene where there's basically been a bloodbath and vampires and werewolves have been like having at each other and there's a comment about Queen Victoria liking a bit of Scottish and Alexa is... Wink, wink, no, no, just say no more, <laughs> say, say no, no more. more. <laughs> and, uh, and she's like, oh my God, you're saying that Mr. Brown and Queen Victoria really did do it. She really does like a bit of Scottish. And she is shocked for the first time all evening. And she's literally been like about to have been bled dry because her preternatural mm. blood would cancel out vampires. And there's a whole cult thing about it, which is good as well. So there's a mystery. There's also a love story in there as well with this bulky tall dark haired dark eyed werewolf type and you're popular it's my alarm i'm awake we're on a schedule we're on a schedule <clears throat> and when the werewolves turn into wolves they shed all their clothes hulk style but when they turn back into human guess what state they're in and there is some really funny shenanigans involved in that. Dane remembers when I was talking about a racy bit and mm. that involved that scenario. I notice you're fanning your face while you talk. 
<laughs> so observant. Mm -hmm. So that was that one and I loved it and now I'm making Dane read it. Yeah, it's on my TBR. Yeah. We're actually going to be doing a video for Lord Literature and Madam Media where we do a TBR swap. So uh, I'm getting this that Susie has read and then uh, we're going to talk about this book. We're both going to have read it and we're also both going to talk about... Jurassic Park. Bye. By Michael Crichton. Thank you, my glamorous assistant. Mm. And I got that on Audible because that's just going to be quicker, especially when I'm feeling like this. Mm. So that's what I'm reading next. And then we can also talk about the films and the books. And you can get nerdy about all of the like the writing style mm. of it. And I can talk about how it wasn't bad for the time, mm. CGI wise. There we go. Yeah. And then. I'm on the next one in that series. It's called Changeless and um, spoiler, they get married by the beginning of this one. But it's, it's a thing. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Look, it's blatantly obvious, all right? Yes, that's and true. Plus, I don't give a shit. No, you don't. You, <laughs> yeah. There are other things you will find. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to the bloodbaths and stuff. That would be good. Yeah, there's some really good humour in there, too. Uh, Is Deuce Terry Lawson going to make an appearance? <laughs> no. Fucking ball bag. But you know what? That the accent is in there somewhere. Oh good. Um, do you ken? I can. I can. I can lass. <laughs> yeah, that would be Lord McCoon. I had to explain to one of my American clients what Ken meant. He was like, why does Big Jim keep saying Ken in me? And I was like, it's Scottish for no. Being quarter Scottish, you, I knew that. You, and you kent it, didn't you? I did, I did. I kent that I I I did. Yeah. I got, oh, I, oh, I don't, I don't know. I've got a bit Welsh now. I don't know what's happening Stop to me. Stop while you're ahead. Stop while you're ahead. Okay. But yeah, um, carrying on with the series, there's um, five in total, and it is the, what was it, the Parasol Pro Protectorate or something? The Parasol Protectorate. That's the one. So I'd not, I didn't know the title of the books or the author or anything, but I have heard of the Parasol Protectorate books, um, which, yeah. And then you were like, oh, yeah, it's them. Yeah, I've heard of them. Like 40 of my Goodreads friends have read this one. So it's that's it's good. It's a good book, that's mm. why. So, um, am I al allowed to go blow my nose no, now? No, uh, well, you can go and blow your nose and then come back. You go do that in return. I'll continue <laughs> to talk. Okay. So, um, yeah, while Susie's been, been feeling a little bit ill, uh, we watched, thank you for that, we watched uh, Scarface earlier. We watched Walk the Line yesterday. Walk the Line was really mm. good. And you were very helpful by showing, telling me when there were all of those little references. Mm, little the Easter eggs. Because yeah. you're a fan. I realised that my life has actually been permeated by the songs of Johnny Cash mm. without even realising it. Just because they're always in films and in the background mm. at discos. I just didn't realise it was all by the same person. But that was really good. Jackson Phoenix was really good at it. And of course he's Jack. Mm. So he's God. It was relatively early for his career as well, though. If you think, when was Gladiator? That was like it two, must have been a similar sort. It of It was time. a couple of years after, because because um, what's it? What the line? I think was 05 and I think Gladiator was 01 or 02 or something like that. But Gladiator was really his first notable role, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I like how you remember the numbers. I just base yeah. it on the fact that he was still pretty at the time. Well, yeah. He didn't quite survive that for Joker. Yeah. But he was still really good. No. Yeah. And Scarface was everything I expected it to be. And more, maybe. No, it was everything well, you, I expected you, it you to be. You, ex you expected it just to be a gangster movie. Yes, there is some political angles to it at the beginning and he's very tragic and he is the result of his circumstances and all of that and it glamorises being a... Yeah. Badass. Take that woman. Now make me a sandwich. Excuse me one second. Ooh, ow, ow. <laughs> we're fine. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and we're now, Biggie's looking very upset. And we're going to go and do a Rubik's Cube video in a minute, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. Because I can solve Rubik's Cubes like a boss. Yes, because you looked up the cheats on the internet. No, I looked up the algorithms on the internet. There's only one. You have to follow. You can't solve it if you don't follow the algorithms. That's like you saying I cheat at chess because I only move the pieces in the way they're supposed to go. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think it's right up there with reading a walkthrough personally, but you got it. But it's like reading a walkthrough for a game that you can only possibly complete if you read the walkthrough. Yes, Which dear. is a bit like the game I made. Yes. I deliberately made it like that. I agree, dear. Yeah. It's fine. Let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, you win, babe. Yeah. Mansplained to victory. Ah! Oh. Yeah. Right, I'm going. Bye! Oh, I'm just going to stretch my nuts out. Oh, I'll let my massive dong get some air. <laughs> oh, Biggie's looking very concerned at me. Um, the only other news of note is that I finished reading whatever it was I was last reading, and I'm currently reading uh, Irvin Welsh. Uh, what's it called? A Good Ride, I think it's called. And uh, it's basically got all of his, you know, well-known characters. A lot of the dudes from Train Spotting are there. So Rent Boy, who I believe Mark Renton, his name is, and I think that's who Ewan McGregor played. I don't know. I know the book's better than the movie. Uh, sick boys in it a little bit, um, but we're mostly following Juice Terry Lawson as he fucks his way around Ed Edinburgh or Glasgow. Pretty sure it's Edinburgh. Which one is the one where? The, yeah, I'm trying to think about the football teams, and it's Edinburgh. It's definitely Edinburgh. Not too much heroin involved. Lots of cocaine though. Um, and yeah, Terry's just thinking about porn a lot because he's comes. This comes after uh, Porno by Irvin Welsh, which I read not too long ago. And yeah, he's. Well, actually, interestingly, his mate, uh, I can't remember, I think it is Renton who's, like, organising the porn empire. He's, um, like, he's kind of sidelining Terry a bit, because they've worked on, I think it was, like, it was like Gang Shag 3 is their next film that they've got coming out. But then they're going much more, like, political and, and upbeat, so they're trying to get some premium scriptwriters and stuff. And Terry's got a bit of a beer gut, so, you know, he might not, he might not make the cut, or the cunt, for that matter. Hello, uh, it's me. I'm still reading A Decent Ride by Irvin Welsh, uh, although I have read uh, One to Gumball by Anukri Carr, because uh, I thought this was going to be a French book, and it turns out this is the translated edition of it. So uh, this one I did enjoy, I would give probably a 4 out of 5 to, uh, and A Decent Ride I'm still very much enjoying. But it is currently Sunday, it is 9.44pm on Sunday the 3rd of January, and so as always it is a good time to end this week's vlog. So. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.